We have to sell MPS. Whoa. Oh, wow. Umkula is so disappointed. Wait, sale? I thought your husband had everything under control over there. They just lost their biggest client, and Uhuru Tessi dies a manji before it becomes worth nothing. MPS will never be worth nothing, sis. Okay, fine. I'll come back and run things. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to ASR, African Stories Realized. This is our weekly review of MPN Season 1. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get into it. Episode 25 picks up at MPS with Ndoni getting suspended after exposing Pastor Shenge and costing them his church's contract. Nosipo was not happy to hear that her friend had been suspended. She demanded that Uhuru lift Ndoni's suspension immediately but he refused and reminded her that they hadn't seen each other since Kaya's death. However, board members from Pastor Schenger's church visited MPS to thank them and Ndoni for exposing the dirty pastor's dealings. The church board members also reinstated their contract with MPS, forcing Uhuru to go back to Ndoni and ask her to return to work. Ndoni refused to return to work after Uhuru offered her to return in a limited capacity. Ndoni then raised her suspicion to Jabulani about Sasa's name in her father's journal, indicating that she may want to look into it. At the Bodoza home, the family made the difficult decision to sell MPS despite Mgondo's objections. Meanwhile in Gokstad, Kaya and Zenzele got closer as Kaya continued trying to convince his son to go to Joburg and help save MPS. Zenzele once again resisted, but he soon had a change of heart. He consulted his mother who strongly rejected the idea of Zenzele going to Joburg on his father's behalf. The episode ends with Zenzele informing Kaya that he can't go against his mother's wishes. Episode 26 picks up with the sale of MPS as Uhuru quickly closed the deal on behalf of his father, which the Bodozas were unaware of. Ndoni then paid Madropa a visit, where she confided in him about her suspension and revealed to him that if she went back to MPS, it would be to resume the investigation into her father's past and tried to hear his name. Meanwhile in Gokstad, Zenzele made his final decision. Despite Sasa's continuous objections to both her son and Kaya, Zenzele started preparing for his impending departure. Sasa also expressed to Mzo and her son how manipulative she felt Kaya was, but Zenzele was already packed and ready to go. He said his goodbyes and was briefed by Kaya on what to do when he arrived in Joburg. Upon arriving in Joburg, Zenzele was dropped off at MPS with documents verifying him as Kaya's true heir. Zenzele made his way inside MPS and demanded to speak to the boss. The episode ends with him announcing that he's Kaya's firstborn son. Zenzele has finally touched down in Joburg, so I expect some fireworks to go off next week. He's arrived just in time to contest Kaya's will and the sale of MPS. I can already see the sibling rivalry developing between Zenzele and Mgonto. I think Nosipo will be the quickest to accept him into the family, but Mrs. Badoza will be hurt. For the past few weeks, I've been questioning whether Kaya's marriage to her was genuine or simply a marriage of convenience to a powerful political leader's daughter. The same goes for Nosipo's marriage to Uhuru. It feels a bit arranged. I think the intersections and conflicts of interests between the families were more by design rather than personal choice. I also get the feeling that Zenzele and Doni will couple up sooner than later. That's also why I think they didn't follow through with her and Jabulani. Ndoni and Zuelaka's characters look like they'll really click, and her recent storyline with Pastor Shenge allowed us to see a different side of her, rather than the psycho side we've been shown for most of the season. It just highlighted that she has strong morals, much like Zenzele. I'm a little bit surprised that Tobani is still hostile towards Ndoni, despite her previously telling him he deserved the MPS job over Uhuru. I expect Ndoni to go back to MPS, but only to investigate some more and try to clear her father's name. Kaya told Zenzele that not everyone will believe he's dead, and I think Ndoni will be the one to find out that he's still alive when she follows the lead about Sasa from her father's journal. I have a theory that Ndoni might end up working with Kaya against the people who were really responsible for her father's death. We've always maintained that there's more to the story, and I don't think Kaya did it. It also appears that the ambulance explosion was a legitimate assassination attempt on Kaya, 
and General Mwethi is our prime suspect. Every move he's made before and after Kaya's death was setting up MPS to end up in his hands. I still wish we were getting three episodes per week, but Mpini is really delivering right now. Finally, the story is making up for the show's pace. It's a very well-written show and has done extremely well to incorporate a multitude of characters. Even the small roles have been well fleshed out. We have about 18 episodes left for season one, so they might as well start shooting season two. We'll be back next week with another review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is ASR for the love of African filmmaking and storytelling.